Hi everyone! For all those familiar with TSC, welcome to the video summarizing this week's meeting. For everyone new, I'll do a brief introduction since I don't know if I'll do a separate video for that. It's nice to meet you, and my name's Caitlin. I've been a Girl Scout for over 11 years, and a writer even longer. TSC stands for Topaz Storytelling Club, and it's a program I've started at my local library in order to earn my Girl Scout Gold Award, the highest honor for a Girl Scout. I wanted to start a creative writing workshop for 3rd to 5th grade kids in the hopes of encouraging a love of writing in their futures. To do this, I created a curriculum of 10 meetings that take place over the course of the summer vacation of 2019. In each of these videos going forward, I'll be talking about a basic outline of each lesson so that my viewers can try it out at home, while the results of my meetings in greater detail will be up on my website. The structure of each meeting is the same each time. First, we take a few minutes to greet each other and take attendance. If there are any newcomers, I meet their parents and give them a permission slip. Then, I'll read that day's story and we discuss it together. This is also the time I weave in that day's writing skill, which could be about anything, from plot structure to character development to time and place setting to themes and central ideas. Then, we do a quick activity like a craft, puzzle, or worksheet, all of which I make myself. After that, comes the main event, which is a block of time where the young storytellers get complete creative freedom to write whatever kind of story they want. They're encouraged to think of that day's word of the day and that day's writing prompt, but it's important to emphasize that they don't have to. There is no structure or set of rules about what they can write about, and they're limited only by their imaginations. They also have the freedom to illustrate their books with the supplies I provide, and they can bind them in a cover. At the end, when everyone is finished, they can share their stories with each other if they want. Finally, after a quick survey, they can take their work home. The survey, by the way, is just for my project and my data collection, so if you're looking to do this at home, then you certainly don't need it or the permission slip. For each meeting, I'll be discussing the book I read and the topic I teach, as well as going into a few of the discussion questions. So, without further ado, here's TSC. Meeting 1 was a great start for my group and went a lot more smoothly than I expected. I had 8 kids sign up when I was only expecting about 3 or 4, so that was definitely a nice surprise. Today, I decided to start off with Dolaire's Book of Greek Myths. I used to love this book when I was these children's age, and I went through a big mythology phase. It has a lot of beautiful illustrations to go along with the classic stories. The myths I chose to read were the myths of my favorite childhood goddess, Athena, and the myth of Hades and Persephone. I love to read aloud, and it works best this way with a group, but if you want to try it at home, you could always have your child read it by himself, or even out loud to you. The writing concept that I wanted to share today is all about how magic and special powers, like those of the Greek gods, affect a character and enhance a story. The discussion starts off by talking about the stories in general, and you can do this after each separate myth or at the very end. I asked questions like, which myth was your favorite? What did you like and not like about each one? Why do we still read Greek myths thousands of years later? What makes them so important? From there, I began to talk about how the powers and abilities of the gods and goddesses made the stories memorable. For example, in the myth of Athena I read, Athena has the ability to change the conceited young girl who challenges her, Arachne, into a spider. Without this ability, the story may have had a different ending. For the Greeks as well, these powers had cultural significance at the time, since they helped to explain things they didn't yet understand scientifically, like how the seasons change. I asked what the stories would be like if the gods didn't have these powers. I also discussed how powers aren't the only things that make a story interesting, because at the root of a story is conflict, and if the powers are way stronger than any of the conflicts, the story won't have any depth or stakes. You can ask, for example, what the downsides might be to having a superpower like flight. Problems such as getting lost in the sky or caught in a storm while flying would make for interesting stories. Powers make for great ways to improve a story, but only if they're done correctly. A story about a character with the power to do anything would not be very interesting if all of his problems, from getting a bad grade to breaking a bone, could be fixed instantly. If you increase a character's abilities, you have to scale up the conflicts they get into along with it. The activity to go along with this discussion was for the children to each design a Greek god or goddess, complete with a name, something to rule over, and any special powers or abilities. I made an example goddess to show them called Spira, the goddess of seashells. I included details about her, such as owning a pet hermit crab and being the daughter of Poseidon, the sea god. The child can be as creative and imaginative as he wants, and there are a lot of great examples up on my blog if you're interested in seeing how they turned out for us. Then, I gave the kids the word of the day, which was stalwart. The writing prompt for the day, which they were free to use or not use, was to write a story about how a character from mythology could enter the modern world. After that, 
The kids were free to write their stories, and during this time I stepped back a little so they could work independently. I still had a lot to do, though. I went around helping with sharpening pencils or stapling papers, spelling words for them and asking them questions about their writing. By the end, there were some really great miniature books that I hope the kids were proud of. The surveys they filled out all said they really liked the meeting, and I can't wait for the next one so I can tell you all about it. I can tell the kids learned a lot, and their parents were very appreciative, which made me feel wonderful. So, that's the end of it for today. Thanks for tuning in to the first TSC meeting video, and I hope you found my tips useful. Goodbye, and until next time!